Alright guys, so these are the different parts of shading whenever you go to shade an object. You have a highlight, the body tone, which is the lighter values on the body of the object. Your half tones, where it starts to go into your shadows more. Um, your turning edge. Your shadow core, which is the darkest part of your shadow on the object. Your body shadow. Your reflected light on the back side of your object. And then your cast shadow. And I'm going to show you how to do that on a circle in a couple of different ways. So I'm going to move this up here and out of the way for the moment. Alright, so I've already pre-drawn some circles on here. And on the first one, we are going to work on how to do with blending. Alright, so we are going to use blending on this one. So first thing I'm going to do is mark where my light source is. So here is my happy little sun, okay, which makes my highlight is going to be right about in this area. And my cast shadow is going to be off in this direction. The first thing I want to draw is my cast shadow. So I'm going to start that off by drawing that down here. Remember your cast shadow is the darkest part of your circle. And when you have a shadow cast from a circle, it becomes more like an ellipse. Like that kind of shape, but you want it to blend out. So it'll be really dark in here. And it's going to shade out as it gets further away. It's going to blend out, sorry. I am using more of the side of my pencil, if you notice, um, but not the wood part. The wood part is not touching the paper. If the wood part of your pencil touches the paper, it will ruin the tooth of your paper, and that's not a good thing. You want that texture. So you want just the graphite to touch the paper. Okay, so there's my cast shadow. Now I want to make sure I leave a reflective shadow, I mean a ref reflective light along this area here of my ball. So I'm going to draw in where my body shadow would be, my shadow core. So here is where my shadow core would be at. This is the darkest part. And then it's going to blend out into the body shadow in this area and then my reflective light down here. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in next. Really nice and dark in here. And I'm not going to do any kind of smudging on this at all. This is all just controlling the pressure of my pencil. The more you can control it, the more the neater your picture will look. It won't look smudged and overly blended. You don't want too much reflective light. Just a sliver. turn it up into my turning edge which goes on this side I'm also going to make sure that I leave my highlight as pure white or the color of the paper which in this case is where I'm working with is white it'll be right about there and we're just going to blend it over and into that value. Just controlling the pressure of the pencil. And keep in mind I'm not going perfectly up and down with my marks. I'm not going sideways. I'm kind of using more of a circular, random kind of movement of my pencil, my hand. I'm 
and if I really want to, I could switch over to a lighter pencil. I was using a 2B, and now I'm going to switch down to an HB, which is like a regular school pencil, to finish this out. Really soft. Soft, soft, soft pressure. I can go into my highlight if I want to, and then just come back and pick it out with an eraser. But I think I will do on this one. And here's my eraser. Just go back in. Lift that back out. I want to keep the ball not having this hard edge with the line from the drawing of it. Mostly when you draw you'll have your edges will be done with your shading. So you don't want to leave this outline around the ball to get rid of it. So what you can do is take your pencil and go in and darken the background. So I might make my wall slightly darker than my ball. without leaving any kind of halo effect from drawing around it because we don't want we don't want it to look like it's glowing or like it has a darker edge around the ball. You just want to use your shading to get rid of your lines. Here already has a decently dark edge, so you might not go as dark on this side. Which I went a little darker than I should have, so I'm going to pick that back out a little bit. See how that makes the ball pop a little bit more? It gets rid of your edges, makes it look more three-dimensional, more realistic. That's what you want to try to achieve when you're shading. And that is how you use the blending technique. Let's try to put that in my table a little bit. There we go. Alright, so that's that technique. So if you want to do the same thing with hatching, then you 